Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. This is yours truly, Minister Kevin L. A. Yorn. Coming to you live from the studios of Dub 103.7 FM with another live and provocative show of the Kevin L. A. Ewing Spiritual Insight Show. It is a rainy day here in Freeport, Grand Bahama, and I love it. I love it because it was like 66 trillion degrees uh, throughout the course of this week. So this rain has come just in time uh, to cool down this hot place. And I'm sure some of you in the Caribbean, probably all across the world, are experiencing the same, the same heat wave that I don't too much care for. But listen, it's great to be back. I've been gone for two weeks now. I heard a lot of y'all uh, cries. <laughs> Or you appreciate me now, now that I wasn't here. I got your emails, I, I listened to your voicemails, and you're happy that I'm back now. Nah, that's right, now nah, continue to be nice to me, and I'll stay here more often. <laughs> but I am honored and pleased to be back with my people. My wife and I had a wonderful, awesome time at the uh, Spiritual Awakening uh, Conference in uh, Philadelphia. It was, to say it was awesome would be an understatement. I want to publicly, publicly thank uh, Pastor Frank Anderson and his lovely wife, Minister Heather Anderson, for such uh, an outstanding conference. Uh, they're going to be putting up a, a, an advert for the uh, video link or for those who want to actually get the uh, video recordings, the actual CDs or what have you. They should be posting a link shortly for that information uh, for you so that you can retrieve your copies if you're interested. I strongly advise you that you should get a copy of it. I want to thank those that were there. I was totally overwhelmed. There was a gentleman, I'm not going to call his name today. <laughs> it was a gentleman that came in from Africa two days prior to the conference. He says he's watching me all the time. A lot of the teachings have changed his life. And he had to, to meet me in person. I was very much taken aback by that. As well as all of the other attendees, it was a very, very informative uh, time. And as with all the conferences that I do, it is not just the conference where you go to and have a good time. No, it is actual learning and deliverance, which was again executed at this particular conference. Uh, this gentleman who I will probably name on a later date is so interesting because he got a flight into America and ended up taking a Uber all the way up to uh, Philadelphia. I think it's like three, I don't know how many hours it was, but I mean, it's a whole heap of hours. And he convinced the Uber driver. He said to the Uber driver, listen, I will uh, pay you, of course, to take me there and bring me back. But I really want you to listen to this guy. So I'm willing to pay which you would make on a regular basis doing your uh, Uber thing. I'll pay you that, plus put you up in a hotel room if you would only listen to this guy, please. Uh, the Uber driver agreed with him. And would you believe that that Uber driver gave their life to the Lord during those services? And I mean, it was such an outstanding thing to me because you just never know who God has inserted into your life at a particular time to take you off of a, a path of defeat or hopelessness or whatever, only to guide you into something that he already had prepared for you. This connection has been very, very awesome, especially with the lady. She, I mean, her, her life in, in, in Christianity has begun. She's learned quite a bit. She had a lot of questions. I hope to, to make more connections, so to connect with her to answer a lot of questions that she would have, and I'm sure there are other facilitators out there who would assist her. I also want to thank uh, Joel and Sherilyn Ross. They did the uh, teaching on the spiritual laws. Listen to me here. Yeah? Even if you don't get the, the CD and the uh, radio recording for me, get it for that. If you're getting married, or if you are married, these guys are going to take you step by step as it relates to the spiritual laws that govern maintain marriages and these are things that we need to hear all right then of course none other than the one and only pastor frank anderson and his lovely wife minister heather uh, anderson they they did their teaching also which was also magnificent again please get the uh the cds and the uh they're gonna be there's gonna be a link 
If you don't want the DVD, sorry, you can. There's a link that's going to be posted. I will be posting it on my web page, on my uh, Facebook, and other venues as soon as I get the information. So you can, uh, through the latest technology, I guess, download it and, and just go uh, from there. After we did the conference, uh, Heather and uh, Frank, of course, decided to take it a step further. And they gave me and my lovely wife, Deidre, a week stay at the Poconos up there in Pennsylvania. Wow. All this time I thought the Poconos was something Disney had going on in some movie. You know, now that I, I say, I, I have no problem with that. Take me to Poconos. It was awesome because it's the kind of thing that I like. You way up there in the mountains, man. And I mean, that nice greenery and quietness, you know. Ain't nobody jamming, no loud music, no car, bugger, bugger, no, 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 none of that. They lock you up up there. <laughs> but seriously speaking, we had an awesome time. Of course, the Anderson, they, we were all together, and we had a week of pure fellowship and fun, and you name it. And, and if I can look on my, my Facebook page, you'll see that we did some, uh, the four-wheeler thing and many other things that we did. It was a very, for me, it was a very, very relaxing time, which now brings me to this announcement that I have to make that I'm sure most of you know already. Well, as of the uh, 26th of July, I had submitted my resignation to my job of almost 33 years had I stayed there until November this year. But I've uh, resigned from, from FedEx. I am no longer at FedEx. I'm no longer the account executive there. It was time for me to move on. It was an awesome opportunity that I had with them, but my calling into ministry was overwhelming. So I had to made the, make the decision, sorry. I was, tr I was trying to balance it as much as I could with ministry and with that, and obviously it couldn't work. Uh, we prayed about it, we fasted about it. Uh, confirmations came, opportunities came up, doors were open, and I was able to uh, relinquish that part of my life, close that chapter of my life, and now move on to full-time ministry, all right? Which now gives me more time to do so many things that I could not do uh, prior uh, to that move. All right, now let me make this clear. Let me make this clear. That don't mean you're going to call me every minute and harass me. All right, I will call the police. All right, there are laws to protect me for people like y'all. All right? <laughs> no, but on a serious note, <laughs> on a serious note, I thank God that God has made it possible and feasible for me to make that transition not having to worry about uh, anything that most people would be concerned about so I again learned a lot from my job a lot that would have conditioned me for this very moment and even in the future and I am just grateful to God to even make such a move at a time like this and this is why I know it is God because you know, most people would be like, oh my God, you know, job's so hard to find. How you could leave your good job and all those benefits and blah, blah, blah. But I got better benefits over here. <laughs> so, so I'm in a better position than I was uh, while I was doing my job. And don't get me wrong, I had a marvelous job, uh, great co-workers and so on and so forth. But like with everything else in life, you know, there's a time frame in which that should have existed. And uh, it had come to the point where decisions had to have been made. I made that decision and I'm now in a better place. And from this point forward, there are some awesome things that's going to be coming, well not on board, they're already on board, that's going to be actually uh, manifested. So you hear much more on that in the future. I said to you a couple months ago that some big, big things are going to take place with my ministry. That was a part of it. Of course, I had to be cautious on how I said certain things because, you know, you got your haters out there. You know, once you say something, they calculate, now they can block you. And I'm so sorry for them. You know why? Because they have no idea that when you try to block people of God, you're blocking yourself, bro. You're blocking you. <laughs> when, when you. When you block people whom God has placed on an assignment, the truth is the only person that's going to be blocked there is you. All right? So if you know what's good for you, go get saved and get delivered. <laughs> but besides all of that, again, I am... I am the happiest man on this planet right now, all right? I am off the plantation, and uh, <laughs> I'm off the plantation, and, and, and I am in a super place. I, I, I just enjoy life. Uh, my mother asked me, said to me, I think it was yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was talking about her, 
And she said, boy, how you feel? You, you, you get, you, you settle in yet? I say, settle in? I say, mommy, I was settling before I even come off the job. <laughs> I, in my mind, I was already off before I physically came off. So I have done tremendous preparation for that move. And, uh, and uh, I am quite content. I want to say this last thing uh, before I come off of that. The decision that I made in, in leaving my job, the decision that I made, I want to make this clear because it has a lot to do with what I'm going to continue with on my teaching today with the, the, the laws that govern life. The decision that I made wasn't a decision that I did because somebody told me to sow a seed or to spin around backwards four times or whatever. No. Just like this teaching today, there are laws, there are rules, there are principles as it relates to life. And the greatest thing you could ever learn in this life are the laws of God, how things operate, whether it's in a marriage, whether it's with your health, whether it's with working with other people, dealing with your enemies, whatever it is. The moment you master the rules, you take control of that situation. And my arrival to where I'm at right now came as a result of me adhering to the very thing you hear me teaching you every week, the rules. And you will hear me repeat this throughout every last one of my teachings. Everything is governed by a law. If you're going to leave your job, if you're going to go into ministry, if you're going to, whatever you're going to do, whether you're going to transition to a new job, a new position, the, the, the main thing you want to know, what are the rules that govern where I'm going? What are the principles in the laws? See, that is what you need to master to perfect or to dominate where you're going. What did you put in place? I know many people say they leave in their job and go into ministry and they're out there looking for work today because all they thought about is, hey, I just leave and I go into the ministry and everybody, hooray! Did you plan financially? Did you put things in place? What, what did you do? Okay? Because yes, God has things in place for you spiritually, but remember now, because everything is governed by law, you, you operating in those laws are going to uh, access the blessings that are in place for you. So the keys to the blessings of your life is predicated on the laws as it relates to that particular portion or segment of life that you're dealing with at that time. So if you don't know the rules or if you're not abiding by the rules or you just haphazardly moving in life and talking nonsense, but uh, the Holy Spirit this and the Holy Spirit that, no, the Holy Spirit himself can tell you, grab the word of God, look for the rules, look for the principles that govern this. Don't go out there begging people for money and say the Lord sent you on an assignment and he said, you must give me $300. No, the devil told you that. So my point is, whatever God has released you to do, he has already made the provisions. However, the provisions are not going to come automatically. The provisions, and this is key now, the provisions are going to come as a result of engaging the laws, the rules, the principles of the Holy Scriptures. And that is key. So wherever you are in life, a horrible marriage, a good marriage. You've got a bad supervisor, a good supervisor. Whatever you're faced with, everything is governed by a rule. Everything is governed by a law. Everything is governed by a principle. If you are depressed right now, listening to the radio, listening to me right now, if you if you down, if you feel hopeless, it is as a result of rules and principles that somewhere along your life's journey, you had either ignorantly or knowingly engaged and now it's giving you this end result. You're talking to someone who experienced both sides of the fence. So I could talk from a learned perspective. All right? So money, money, I tell people this all the time. When you, when you get money in your life, it doesn't make you smarter. If, if you are a person and you won, let's say the lottery right now, $1 million, $1 million isn't going to make you smarter. The only thing money is going to do for you, all right, is speed up what you were always doing prior to receiving the money. So if you, if you are a waster and a spender, okay, with no accountability before the money, well, now you have more fuel, which is the money that you receive, to now speed up that process. If you were a saver, then you're going to save the money. So don't believe that monies make you smarter, that now that you got money, you become some Einstein or with that money came a bachelor's degree in common sense or something. No, no. Even with the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a part that you play, all right? 
and the part that you play is you have to adhere to his way of doing things, the way that he has set things up to be achieved in the earth. And those who violate the law, those who want to do it their way, these are the people who are going to face much confusion in their lives, much sorrow and heartache. They do not plan. They have no, no, no goal, no, no objective, no nothing, none of that. There are no uh, KPIs, uh, my former job used to call it. There are no key performing indicators in their lives to show them, hey, you know what, I'm falling short over here or, or whatever. So what they do, they blame or place everything on God. Well, will the Holy Spirit tell me this? And the Holy Spirit say this to tell you this. Well, if the Holy Spirit telling you all that to tell me, why he ain't tell you yet but you're lying tongue? Why he ain't tell you yet but you're careless life? Why he ain't tell you yet stop begging people for money and save your own money and manage and budget your own money? What kind of Holy Spirit this is who could get you to use you to speak into the life of somebody else but leave you in the desert land? Because if that's the Holy Spirit, I'd want to undo him. So life is about rules. Life is about principles. And whenever you try to challenge those principles and those rules, then all hell is about to break loose. So let's quickly go into our sponsors and we're going to go straight into our teaching for today. Simply the best. For all of your multimedia needs, whether it's video, audio, weddings, funerals, private parties, work parties, beach parties, whatever it is that you want to do, simply the best are the people that you want to speak to. If you have old videos on VHS or VHSC, you know those old big bulky tapes, and now you want to put it on a flash drive or some, uh, you know, digital means, now you'll take it off with them old ancient stuff that... I think that's the same camcorder Nor used. As soon as he came off the arc, he was recording the little stuff around there. You, you want to do away with that and transfer that old recording, video or audio, or even both, to new platforms, then simply the best is the company that you want to give a call. Their number is 3516519. That's 3516519. You can speak to Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Clifford Bow, who would be more than happy uh, to assist you. Then we have entertainment, DVD, and snack for all your snackable needs, <laughs> okay? Uh, where is the Dorito chips or where is the uh, variety of patties? Again, the beef, jerk, curry chicken, cheesy beef patties, spinach patty, vegetable patties. They got them all there. The beef hot dog, the every, you, you just go there and tell them Kevin sent you. You won't get hooked up with that hot dog or whatever. They also got an array of drinks, the Gatorade, the sodas, you name it. Especially how uh, all of this rain and stuff today, man, sneak on over there, man. Tell them Kevin send you. Say, listen, Kevin uh, 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 send me over here. And, and let me tell you something. They got a super deal going on over there. Now, you don't want to miss this. They didn't tell me about it, but I, I got the inside story. And listen to the deal, right? Listen to this carefully now. And in fact, you need to start making your video now before I even say this. But this is the deal. If you go over there right now, they got this super payment plan. Pay all when you get there, and you don't owe them nothing. Boom, there you go. Pay everything when you get there. The sodas, you pay for everything, and you don't owe them nothing. <laughs> okay? So you can't beat that deal. So go over there right now to Entertainment DVD and ask to speak to Mr. Tony Peniman or Angelo Peniman and tell them, I come for that deal Kevin was telling me about. You sold it there for a dollar something. He said, if I pay all right now, everything, I owe you all nothing. And that's the truth. So that's the best. They got a nice payment plan over there. They teach you how to budget. <laughs> Teach you how to save over there. Then we have Tico's Fashion for all your men's needs in terms of clothing. Uh, nice cargo pants and nice shirts and summer wear, nice cool wear, especially during this. Hey, this this is a hot summer, man. I must say, this is hot, man. Listen, I, I listen. My power bill last year, man. Listen, when they when they when they because they electronically send you the power bill now. When they send me my power bill, I was wondering if this was the power bill for my entire corner. Because <laughs> this was coming kind of high over here. But of course, uh, uh, the heat is, I mean, crazy out there. And in order to get some kind of comfort, of course, you've got to now crank up that old air condition, right? So Tico's fashion will assist you with that. If you ain't got the AC, then Tico got the cool, nice clothing there, all right? So take your husband, take your uncle, take your first, second, or third cousin. Take them there immediately. Buy them some nice shorts. Some nice cool shirt. Again, just like the shirt that I'm wearing right now, this is a Tico's fashion product. It's very cool. 
uh, cottony. I like it. No sticky nothing on you. This is the way to go. So give them a call at 352-3394, 352-3394, and they are located on Kent Street. Now, I know what you're saying, Kevin. Now, come on. You know better than that. Nobody know no Kent Street is. I know. So I'm going to give you the Caribbean direction. Right at the rear of the post office, diagonally across from the Scotia Bank. Okay, that's how we do it here in the Caribbean. You know, you know 103rd Street, nothing. You're going to find that right here. They ask you for direction. Yeah, right up by Junior Demos. You know, the yellow house with a big rock on the corner there. You can't. As soon as you pass that rock, take the first left and then you spin around. It's almost like instructions they're giving you from church. <laughs> so. So definitely take out fashion for all of your men or husband needs or what have you. You want to give them a call. Then we have JN Builders General Construction Company. Their numbers are 352-2432. And anything to do with construction, building a home, building a shack, a garage, doing a walkway, a driveway, building a wall. Uh, you want to do some, some units for Airbnb, hey, whatever it is. You just tell them what it is. And they will assist you in constructing something very uh, that will meet your needs or whatever it may be. So give them a call. Again, it's 352-2432. Or if you need to call them right now, it's 533-2064. And you can speak to Mr. Julian Nixon or his lovely wife, Mrs. Karen Nixon. Either one of them would be more than happy to assist you. I want to say thank you to all of my private sponsors. All of my private sponsors as well as those who have just called off for assisting me with having this show for you uh, every week, of course, if, unless I'm traveling. And I want to thank you in advance. I want to thank you uh, for all of the past contributions that you've made uh, to keep this show on the end that many people all over the world, okay, thank God to social media, uh, getting to hear this unadulterated truth. I am so overwhelmed when I read emails. I mean, there are so many emails, so thousands of emails. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. I receive thousands of emails daily, all right? So, of course, I cannot go through all of them, but the ones that I do go through, especially those ones with the testimonies, I am so elated because what I'm seeing here, and this is so amazing, there are people right here where I live who I would talk to on a regular basis about, you know, whatever their problem is. And every time I talk to them, oh, Kevin, you know, I tried the fast and, you know, the, my head hurting and, and, you know, I went on a two-day, oh, Lord, my kidney, you know, hurting me, all these excuses I hear. Kevin, I tried, but I know, oh, Lord, you know. But then there are people who are way on the other side of the planet, who I have never had a conversation with, came across a video or someone sent them my video they follow the instructions I gave as it relates to the Bible, and now they're sending me a testimony based on their application of the word. What is the difference between them, who I don't see and don't know, and the ones that I do see telling them the same thing? So, again, you need to make the word applicable. You need to get out there and do what you need to do. Stop complaining. Stop talking mess. But you can't do this and... All these excuses. When you used to go to the club and doing your, 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 your wickedness when you was into wickedness, you won't have no excuses for the devil. You won't say, oh, devil, I, I can't commit adultery today. No, you didn't say that. No. In fact, you asked him if he, what was your schedule for adultery or whatever ignorance you was doing. So what I'm saying to you is, now that you are on track with God, enough with the excuses. Enough with the excuses. Get out there. Do what you need to be doing. Make the sacrifice that needs to be made. Okay, get on board and stop running over nonsense because you making up excuses, you complaining all the time, is not going to fix anything. All right? Now, with that said, let's get into today's teaching. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I really couldn't wait to get back home because I'm telling you, man, I, I really miss these sessions, man. And then you're going to get more of this. I tell you, some good things are on the rise and you're going you're gonna to love what I'm about to present in the coming weeks, all right? I just had to make that transition and, and make sure everything was in place, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to be phenomenal. The Laws That Govern Life, Part 3. The Laws That Govern Life, Part 3. And, of course, we're continuing. And for those of you who have not uh, watched the Part 1 and Part 2, 
I strongly advise you to visit my YouTube page, Kevin L.A. Ewing, uh, and you can watch part one and part two. And I, I strongly advise you to watch it because you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna attain a lot from it. And again, I was so overwhelmed at the conference after we were taking our breaks or whatever. You know, of course, you know, everybody wanted to talk and they would always talk about, oh, I watch this. And they could literally tell me every video and go into detail. And I am so impressed by this because it shows me people who want better. So they realize that in order to get better, I got to do better. I got to do something different. I cannot have an excuse for every time things ain't going my way. Let me continue to do what, what, do what I wasn't doing before to achieve something different. So I was really, really uh, elated by that. Okay, so the laws that govern life. Again, go and watch those two videos. I said to you in the previous videos that everything in life is governed by law. In fact, I said it earlier when we started the program. There is absolutely nothing in this life. Nothing. And when I say nothing, absolutely nothing. To the, to the most insignificant thing, for example... You had a cup on the table, your hand accidentally hit it and it dropped to the ground and it splattered all over the place. The way that even splattered, there were rules, there were principles that governed that particular action. God is a God of order. And in order for God to have the order that he is maintaining in there, you may think he's not having no order because you're saying, oh, all these people getting killed in Afghanistan, the uh, Iraqi war, and the gay rights movement, and all these other people going against the law. No, 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 no. There's order. There is order. Do you know or do you realize there's even order in this order? You cannot achieve this order outside of rules that will lead to that. And I'm telling you this because what I'm trying to get to is that the greatest thing you could ever learn in this life are rules. The greatest thing you could ever seek to achieve for a better life is the laws, the rules, the principles that govern life. What are the laws? When was the last time you heard somebody was getting married and they say, I'm going to the Bible to look at all of the rules that Jesus Christ or God has placed there as it relates to a union? When was the, because I've never heard it. When was the last time you heard somebody who was going to build a home or somebody who have a goal and they said, I'm going to find the scriptures, I'm going to find the laws, how to maintain wealth, how to achieve wealth, how to be successful. So give me the rule book, give me the manual for life, which is the Bible. Have you ever heard that? No. No. So what has happened then? What has happened now is that in particular preachers has now come along with their fancy theories and ideologies and opinions and so on. And, 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 and everything that they tell you is you have to give money basically to circumvent what God's standard is for you to reach a specific objective. And that is why many people have found themselves, listen to me right now, in the positions that they are in. Because in their mind, I'm following what the preachers say. I'm sowing the seed. I'm praying. I'm giving my offering. I'm buying the pastor's suits and, and giving his wife cupcakes and all these other things. I'm doing that. What more should I do? I mean, look at Johnny over here. He, he don't serve God and all these good things happening to him. But me, I committed to my pastor. I'm committed to my uh, first lady, I'm committed to apostle and bishop. I, I've been to this church for 769 trillion years. God is not fair. No, you said it correctly. You are committed to those things, but you are not committed to the laws of the living God. You couldn't, it couldn't have been eloquently better said. So this is why I say to you in my teachings, and a lot of people get offended, and I will continue to say it until you stop getting offended, and stick to what I'm really saying, or get a hold of what I'm saying. When we're dealing with life, we should be putting emphasis on the Word of God. What does the Word of God says about this particular thing? Because Kevin is saying here, and rightfully so, he's given us the scriptures, that everything is governed by a law. Nothing is haphazardly happening. Crime isn't just happening. People 
finding the right mates in life is not accidentally happening. People aren't just falling into something beautiful or something bad. There were steps, there were protocols, there were processes that led to that particular outcome that laws were either activated or deactivated ignorantly, unknowingly. Nevertheless, it is determining a specific end result. Your bad situation you're in right now is not happening because it could happen. It is happening because you're either ignorant to the rules that have you in this tailspin of defeat, or if it is a good thing that is consistently producing good, then there's something right as it relates to the laws that you're adhering to. But there's no such thing uh, as when a person said, and I, I posted this on my page the other day, when a preacher said there's a, there's a shift in the air and, and, and God is getting ready to do this and, God, and guess what he is? There's no lie about it. But it's going to be for those who are following the rules. Yeah, the shift is there. Yeah, the turnaround is there. The breakthrough will always be there. But the, the manifestation of those things are going to come as a result of he or she, okay, that took the time to engage the laws of God. Everything in life is governed by laws. Therefore, the most important thing is to learn the laws that govern life. And where are we going to find this? In the Holy Bible, in the Holy Scriptures. This is why I constantly say, people say I say it because I'm angry or whatever. Well, continue to say it. I say don't come to me unless you bring in the rules. You know where I got that from? You know what gave me that motto? The church, you know. See, I grew up in churches where I heard cliche after cliche, and it really angered me because I followed those cliches, and it never panned out for me. It is only when I decided to read and study that word for myself and begin to engage what it says, I now begin to see the manifestation of what it said. And that's why I got it from. So I say to people, if you're not bringing me the scripture, not no twist the scripture, if you're not bringing me the scripture, don't come to me. I don't want to hear what you have to say. Because I, I, I walked away from the hocus pocus. I walked away from the cliches and the double for your trouble and the, all of that. And now that I'm not leader, I now point people to the scriptures. And when I give them a, a, a solution, they will tell you every last one, Kevin gave us the rules that went along with it. Kevin said this is based not on his opinion, but this is what the law says. Follow this law and you will get exactly what the law says. Now, just to show you, I want to point out right now a few scriptures as it relates to laws. And the purpose of this particular exercise is to now cause you, which I've been trying to do from the beginning of this series, but overall in all of my, the entirety of my teachings, is to cause you to look at the Bible differently. And what do I mean by that? I don't just want you to look at the Bible as a book that you read because it's the right thing to do, or that's what the preacher said to do. Or every time you get into problem, Grammy say, well, child, go read your Bible. No, 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 that's not the reason why. That should not be the reason for you reading your Bible. Your Bible should be the most important book in your life. You know why? Because just like with any manufacturer, there is a manual that they give you. And if you apply that manual or adhere to the rules of the manual as it relates to whatever it is that the manufacturer created, you will get peak performance out of it. So therefore, your Bible, anything to do with your life, you should say, Lord, okay, God, show me your word. Where in your word? I just met this new guy. I just met this new girl. Father God, I want to start my own business. Father, I'm on the job, but I want to be successful. Show me in this rule book. What is it that I have to do? What laws that I must adhere to to bring about what you have promised according to what I'm asking. When your car have a problem, all right, what do you do? Well, let me, I wouldn't say what you do because I know you're probably ain't doing it. What is it that you should do? You should refer to the manual. Because obviously the manufacturer would have done all the checks and balances, all of the testing. They know how much pressure to add to the tire. They know how much oil should be in that engine. They know how much fluid should be in the, the coolant. They know all of that. So 
to skip you from having to do the testing, they now put their findings in a book that in order to get this vehicle to operate on a consistent basis without breaking down on you, all you must do is follow the requirements we have in this book. This is the exact thing God is saying to us. You are failing today. You have failed in your marriage. You failed on your job. Nobody wants to be friends with you. You are being rejected. There's nothing good happening in your life. Is it because you're a bad person? Well, maybe not. Maybe it's because you decide to put away the rule book and do things on your own. And that's why the Bible is clear in one of the rules of that book in Proverbs 16 and 25. There is a way unto you that seem right. But at the end of that way, listen what the law is going to prophesy. At the end of that way is, is destruction or death. So the rule book once again, in Proverbs 16 and 25, is telling us before the conclusion is prophesying. And that's what I love about the rules. The rules are like prophecies. It's telling me the end of something from its beginning. Kevin, if you take this route, and you dismiss God, and everything about you in this is what you want and how you want it to be done, then the rule book, according to Proverbs 16 and 25, he said, it's a way, this seemed right, Kevin, but let me tell you what the end result is going to be before you even get there. You're going to fail in the end. You're not going to be successful. You're going to have misery and all these other things. Why? Because that's what the rule book says. Then the rule book comes back, Proverbs 19 and 21, I love it. It says that there are many ideas or there are many devices in a man's heart. There are many things that I want to do. I wanted to leave my job before the day I gave in my resignation. But I wasn't released to go with, and release from God. Let me make this clear. No man released me. Release from God. <laughs> it was not the right time at the time. And the day the Lord gave me the release, it was clear. Everything fell right into place. Why? Because the scripture says... In Proverbs 19 and 21, there are many devices in a man's heart. There are many ideas. There are many dreams that he have, which is myself. It says, but only the counsel of God, only that which the manufacturer has written as it relates to the rules that govern life will prevail. So I had to back back. I was becoming miserable on my job. Miserable in the sense that the job wasn't making me miserable. But you know it's time to go. You know it is a calling on your life. Everything is telling you it's time to go forward. But you need the manufacturer to give the, the green light. So it says that there are many devices in a man's heart. But only the counsel or the instructions of God or that which he has counseled himself on concerning you shall prevail. So therefore now, I had to now really begin to pray according to the word. Father, I'm ready to leave now, but let your counsel that you have spoken about me, let that be the determining factor. Let I leave this to you. Let Give me the green light. Give it to me spiritually, confirm it physically for me, and let me know when it's time to go. So when I leave from here, there's no regrets. There's no, oh, I should have done this. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. Oh, I should have prayed more. No, 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 no. So when I walked away from that, that's, that, that door is shut. I don't hear nothing from that situation no more. Because that was just a stepping stone to take me to the next assignment or level in my journey through life. So the rules are clear. All right? So that law that I just gave you both of them is one that is determining how you can achieve destruction. So you see in the first one, Proverbs 16 and 25, that destruction or failure doesn't happen haphazardly. It doesn't happen because it could happen. There were rules that were being engaged, whether we were activating or deactivating or adhering to or dismissing rules or laws or principles. But at the end of the day, whether we are aware of it or not, we were following a protocol to achieve the failure when I decided to do it on my own. When I decide to, oh, I'm going to marry this woman over here because she's pretty and she's smart or whatever. I'm going to marry this guy because he's tall, dark, and handsome. And all I'm thinking about is how this is going to fit into my life. How this is going to benefit me. But the rule book says that what is right to you will end in disaster. Many of you listen to me right now. You're on your second, third marriage. That's, that's the principle right there. 
that you were standing on and don't even realize it. All you thought about was, was how you could fit in this. Oh, child, when my friends see me, would they be so tall and cute? They could be so jealous. Oh, they could be jealous, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, they could be jealous. No, 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 no. That's why I say to you all the time, what is the rules? Let me give you this piece of advice for those of you who have been hell on the job right now. I want you to hear me. Any job you go on, any promotion you want, or wherever you are in that job right now, you want to dominate that job? You want to be superior on that job? You want to outsmart all of them on the job? Tell them to give you the rule book. Say, pass me the rule book. I don't care where you are. The boss, the supervisor could be oppressing you, don't matter. Tell them, where can I find the employee manual? And now you study it. And now when you study it, you live according to it. And in doing that, you know what it means now? You got to remove your emotions. Remove how you think they feel about you or how you feel about them. Get all that in the garbage because that didn't come along with the job. You brought it on the job. Look at the rule book. The rule book says you shouldn't wear black, then you don't wear black. The rule book says you should put on the red nose, then you put on the red nose. Whatever the rule book says, you do. Because at the end of the day, when you stand before HR, human resources, whatever, you know what they're looking at. They're going to look at what their rules say, and then they're going to compare your performance, not with your opinion of others or even yourself, but what does the rules say? So what does this mean? The rules protect you. The rules preserve you. The rules have to put a shield around you. It may not seem so when you're going through it at the time, but trust me on this one. I live this. The rules are going to protect you in the end. Same thing with God laws. They're there to protect you. They're not there to be egregious or to make life difficult or to say, oh, they're too hard to follow. No. When he say, do not fornicate, do not lie, do not uh, uh, covet your neighbors or whatever, he ain't putting that there to put hurdles in your way. No. No. They're there to protect you. It's there to preserve you. Kevin, man, I understand that. Okay. The Bible says do not fornicate. So you go out there, you fornicate with everybody. A couple of years later, boom, guess what? Come back HIV positive. So what's going to happen now? Oh my Lord, I can't have kids, Lord. If I have kids with someone, oh, I can infect them. And your whole mind gone now. Now, what is happening now? Because you defied the law, the law can't protect you. So what am I saying? The laws will respect those that respect the law. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. There's no two ways about it. If you want to find destruction in it, then you break the law. That's it. If you, if you want a miserable life, break the law. But if you want a good life, then you find the rules that govern whatever you're about to get yourself into. No. No, I'm telling you, and, and, and if you follow that simple rule, you watch our life will, will, will take off you. So, I want us to just look at a few rules before I really get into my main base scripture, which we will take from Joshua chapter 6. We can read Joshua chapter 6 and Joshua chapter 7. Two weeks ago, I gave you uh, this law on the law of kindness, and that was Proverbs chapter 11, right? And we were looking at verse 24 and verse 25. And I'm coming back here again because, again, I don't want you to see the Bible as just a book that you read to say, hey, look, I read my Bible today. No, the Bible is a manual for your life. It is a rule book for you to perform at your peak. If you want to perform at your peak, then you read the Bible. If you are not interested in performing at your peak, then do not listen to the Bible. Do not read the Bible. Don't have nothing to do with it. Don't go to church. Don't listen to the pastors. Don't do none of that. If you want to be a complete failure in life, then you do that right there. Dismiss the things of God. Proverbs chapter 11, beginning at verse 24, it says, There is that scatter it, and yet increase it. Meaning that there are people who are always giving, but somebody somehow, as a result of their giving, they're always getting. So this here now speaks of the law of kindness, or the law of giving. He that is kind, always helping other people, giving to other people, it says that he shall increase. The next part of it says, and there is that withhold more than is meet or needed, but it now tends to poverty. So it speaks about the law of kindness in this passage, as well as it speaks about the law of poverty. So it says, now, if you want to achieve things in life, if you want to get stuff in life, then you must initiate that process by engaging the law of giving. 
there are people who I sat down with this, and I mean, I went over this with them. You know what they say? Well, Kev, I ain't got nothing to give. See, always a complaint, and that, and that bothers me. Every time you, they come to you for solution, right? You've given them the solution, and right behind the solution, there's an excuse. Oh, Lord, Kevin, oh, I only got me. And so, listen, I like the woman at Zero Fat. The Bible says that when Elijah showed up there and she lay her case to him, she's easy. Listen, I hear all that stuff. Would you say, well, go fix me some, 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 some soup? And she said, well, you know what? Even though this only for me and my son, we can die, I can do what you say. Stop with the excuses. You are in the position that you are in today because you cannot keep your mouth shut with the excuses. If you were speaking the word of God as much as you come up with excuses, you would be in a far better position than you are right now. There is that scattered or there is the person that give it and the Bible say, and they shall increase. But the people who hold on to more than what they need, they already sorted all of their kids' school uniform, all their good shoe, shoes and, and pencils and school supplies. They done straight. They done sort all of that. And God is telling them now, listen, I want to always have you in this position. But what I need you to do now is now that you've already met the needs of your household, now find someone who's in a less position who cannot meet the needs of their household. He says in doing this, watch the rule now, Proverbs 11 and 24, he says you're going to now activate a law that's now going to invite things to you now. It's going to maintain resources as well as take your resources even higher. He said, but you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. You could ignore this. But when you ignore this, you're now activating the second part of the law, which says that now he that holds on to more than what he needs, meaning that you have already met all of your needs. You, don't, you, you have extra. He said, a person who refuses to give or to share, it says that poverty will be their portion. Now, that sounds backwards as it relates to the theories and the ideologies of the world. The ideologies of the world is... Oh, save for a rainy day, which is true. So you're putting, you're hoarding up money, hoarding up money. One sickness can come and knock all that out and put you in the rest. In the red, sorry. So the Bible is telling us, I'm giving you the laws to prosper. I'm giving you the laws to not only get increase, but how to sustain and maintain it. And it has to come as a result of you following this principle. But if you choose to be mean and stingy and don't want to share and always trying to find a way to crook someone, then expect your life to be a life of lack, a life of barely making it, a life of just enough or not enough. The second part of this law in verse 25 says, the liberal soul shall be made fat. Of course, your soul here would be your mind, your will, your intellect. Like I always tell you, it is the, it is the administrator of your entire being. So the scripture is saying here, the one who is always liberal means free, thinking freely. How can I meet a need? How can I assist someone? How can I do this? It says the liberal soul shall be made fat. Some translation said that the liberal soul shall become wealthy. And I believe it. The second part says here, and he that water it shall one day be watered himself. In so much words, he that is always giving, make no mistake about it. Somebody's going to give into his or her life. When I tell you I live this, this here, I would teach you nothing. I would teach you absolutely nothing in detail, that is, that I haven't experienced before and is currently living now. The laws of God work, but they're not going to work for you if you don't work the law. They're not going to work for you if you're holding on to some fable or some old wives tale or some nonsense what you want is the manufacturer's manual as it relates to your life all right i want us to look at now at the law of extension all right the law of extension and what do i mean by the law of extension the law of extension is but before i get there let me let me i kind of jump ahead of myself let's look at the law of temporary the law of temporary is the same as the law of seasons, which you will find, and I want you to turn there, to Ecclesiastes. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and that will be from verse 1 to verse 8. All right? These are laws. These are not just stories in the Bible that Solomon wrote or whoever. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, listen to what it says. To everything, listen carefully now, to everything, because this is a rule, there is a season or there is a time frame for it to exist. 
in so much words, what it's saying here is that it cannot go on forever. It now begins to go into detail. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. Okay, the season will mean the segment it's supposed to operate in. The time is the tenure of it. All right, for example, you have an appointment with the debtors at 10 o'clock on Monday. All right? Now, their time for you to be there is like from 10 to 11. That's the time you have for that particular appointment, which will be a season. After that 10 to 11 finish, that's it. They're looking for the next person to come to fill in the, from the 11 to 12 spot. So the law of temporary is saying here, according to the scripture now, that everything have a season and attached to the season or the time of existence, there is a period in which it should exist. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. Then it now goes into detail. A time to be born and a time to die. You all hear this all the time at funerals, right? A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build. And of course it goes all the way down to verse 8. Now, in this particular law, like I said, it is clear. It is the law of temporary, meaning that it cannot go on forever. It is a law of season. There are periods in which things should take place. But as I was alluding to earlier, I said to you about the law of extension, how something that was supposed to be a season could now be extended. And there's a law for that. And this is where I want us to go. Let's go now to, the, to, to Proverbs. Proverbs 13. Let's go to Proverbs 13. And we're going to read from verse 2 to verse 3. And we're going to see the law of extension here now. The law of extension. All right? Okay. Proverbs 13, verse 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his lips. Oh, oh. Let's pause right there now. So the law is telling us here now that from the things that we are saying, all right, on a consistent basis, that it's going to produce a fruit. All right, watch this now. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. Verse 2. He that keepeth his mouth, the original rendering of this word, keep it, in Hebrew means to guard. He that guards his mouth simultaneously guards his life. So, what, Kevin, how does get the law of extension? Well, here it is you had a season of poverty, right? And this season was supposed to be finished up now next week. God, already a, a day in next week for someone to bless you or whatever. But during your season of poverty, the only thing that's coming out of your mouth, my God, I mean, things so rough around here. Every time you put two steps forward, you're going to take two back. My Lord, I only pay in the white bills. When the government can do this, I mean, they raise in VAT, my Lord, 60%. Listen, by the fruit, he said, of your lips. Guard your mouth because your mouth could cause you to be in a situation longer than you're supposed to be there. It's the law of extension. The law of extension. Proverbs 18 and 21. What does it say? It says that life and death resides where? In the power of the tongue. And they that love the life or the death that they are constantly speaking shall now begin to eat the fruit of what they're speaking. I could never get ahead in life. Every time, every time, the same time of the year I try to do this, something always has happened. You have no idea that you're activating a law that is causing you to be in a spot, anchored to a place that you should have left a long time ago. But nobody's teaching you the law. Nobody's teaching you the law. This is why I say to you, if the preacher is preaching, put a demand on that preacher. What is the law, sir? I hear your fancy slogans. I hear your Bible school eloquent uh, presentation. But I hear no scripture. Because the scriptures are the rules. The scriptures are the laws. The scriptures are the principles that govern life. Not your rhymes. Not your riddles. Not your spin around and doing the watuzi. That can't help me. No. I need to know the rules. Because I didn't know. I didn't know. 
that even though you're saying up there, preacher, that, that God is saying that there's a shift for somebody, and I'm jumping up and down, but nobody never told me that. After I'm done with the jumping up and down, I sit right down and begin to resonate that negative garbage in my head and now begin to speak it, not knowing that I'm extending, which I was once participating in the law of temporary, I'm now putting an extension onto it now by repeating that negative junk. It's a law. It's a rule. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a principle. And, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm giving you these few scriptures because this is the whole Bible. Because I want you to, your perception of the Bible, I'm trying to shift now. It's just not a book to open up on a Sunday when the preacher say, turn to so and so. It's not just a book you keep in a sacred place in your home. Uh-uh. It is your manual to exist correctly or the way that God has designed you to exist. And all of the obstacles and all of the troubles and all of these things you're going through negatively are a direct result of you dismissing the guidebook, which are the scriptures. So this is why it is so important. It is so important for us in, in, in terms of discovering our will or purpose in life. People say to me all the time, Kevin, I, don't, I can be real with you, Kev. I hear you all the time on the radio. And I hear you, even in your writing, you talk about your gift and, and this man, Kev, I don't know my gift, man. I can keep it real with you, man. I and I got so much thinking on my life, man. I don't know my gift. Listen, the best way to discover, I want you to hear me, Radio Land and, and, and social media. The best way to discover what the manufacturer has called you to do, read on a consistent basis the manufacturer manual. Why? Because as you adhere to the rules, to the principles, the rules and the principles are going to direct you to where you're supposed to be. It's as simple as that. You don't have to believe me. Go try it for yourself. I speak it again from experience. All of my time in committing to the Bible and reading supplementary books and getting into the Word on a consistent basis has brought me to this point. And, I, and when let me make this clear now, that didn't mean it was smooth sailing. Oh, no, no, no. There were storms. There were trials and toils. But all of that was, was activating in me what I was called to do. And I'm doing it now. So this is important. You need to understand the rules. Because everything is governed by a rule. Right? Now, let's go to my base scripture here. Let's go to Joshua. Let's go to Joshua. And we're going to read from verse, uh, we're going to read from verse, where is it now? Joshua chapter, is it Joshua chapter? Yeah, let's go to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. All right? Listen to what it says. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. And none came in. So the people of Jericho who served pagan gods, not the God of Abraham, they were so afraid of Israel that they sealed up their city because, you know, they had the Jericho walls and no one was coming in or out of, of Jericho. And, of course, they were doing this because of the children of Israel. Now listen to verse 2 now. And the Lord said, I'm going to take my time because I want you to get something here. This is Joshua chapter 6, verse 2. And remember, the scripture we're reading here is based on rules, all right? Verse 2 of Joshua 6 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have, circle this word, given. Now I want you to circle that word, or I want you to highlight that in your Bible, or whatever device you have, make sure that word is highlighted. I'm going to read this particular uh, verse, and I'm going to come back to that word. I'm going to start it again. Joshua chapter 6 verse 2 says, And the Lord said to Joshua, Joshua was the leader at that time of the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given, circle that word, into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Now let's go back to the word given. Now for the English Majors out there, those who got all those, you know, degrees in English or who are good at the English language, the word given is a past tense word. 
Meaning now, it's speaking of something that has already happened. So God is speaking to the leader now. Moses was already dead. Joshua succeeded him, right? And he's telling Joshua, Joshua, he says, I have already shut down Jericho. I've already delivered them to you. Now remember, in verse 1, the scripture is clear. And it says that Jericho is so sealed, not even the people in Jericho could come and foot in and out of traffic in and out of Jericho. They have been given orders, I guess, from their leaders, shut the whole place down. Seal the doors, those 50, 60 feet walls. There's no way uh, Israel could get in there. There is no human means. They had no tractors, they had no bulldozers, they had nothing to knock the walls down. So the scripture starts out in verse 1 that Jericho is, Jericho is straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. They said, these fellas say they're no good. We're shutting this place down. There's no way they can get in here. But then God come back in verse 2 and he says to them, Hey, Joshua, I'm going to give you some intelligence, some spiritual intelligence here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something to you that you already possess, you and the children of Israel, even though you haven't physically attained it as yet. He says here, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given, past tense, I have given into thine hand, you already have defeated Jericho. Mighty God. You take my time, I just get excited about this. <laughs> I want you to hold your finger there for a minute. Be coming right, right back here. Right back here. Keep your finger here because I have to show you another scripture because I'm trying to tie in something here, all right? Let's go now to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to look at uh, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Listen to what it says. Blessed... Be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we get that. Watch this now, because this is about us. Who hath blessed, circle the word blessed, because I see an E-D on the end of that word. Who hath blessed? So, if there's an E-D on the end of blessed, it means that whomever he's about to say that he is blessed, has already, he has already done this. This isn't something that he's getting ready to do. This is something that God has already done in the realm of the unseen world or the spiritual world, which is what this whole show is about. Who had blessed us with not some, but all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ or in the spiritual realm, in Christ Jesus. So this scripture is saying to us, the blessing around the corner, the, 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 the whatever it is they've been telling you, you are already a spiritual possessor of it. But just like in this case, and just as we are about to go back to Joshua chapter 6 and continue to read, you are going to see, hallelujah, that the blessings does not automatically come even though you are a child of God. The blessing does not automatically come because you're an apostle. The blessing does not come because you run from one part of the church to the next and run your head into the pulpit. The blessing is going to come because you are following the rules, the principles, and the ordinance of Almighty God. Play with me talking mess in my head today. No! And that's where your people are going wrong right there. You're going wrong because someone is telling you that if you sow this, someone is telling you that if you put this seed in, no, I ain't reading that mess. No. And that's why so many people are frustrated. They're telling you if you pay your tithe, then you're going to give. How come the fellow who ain't paying his tithe succeeding more than me? How come the fellow who don't give is succeeding more than me? How come the fellow who is not a Christian is succeeding more than me who is a Christian? Maybe because he's kind. Maybe because he's giving to the poor. See, not because he isn't a Christian mean that he cannot participate in the law. Hello. See, he's participating in the law, and as a result, he's getting what the law promises, whether he's a Christian or not. Don't you play with me? Don't you play with me? Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, 
Warren Buffett, uh, the guy who did from Apple, Steve Jobs, all of the big timers. Every last one of them have some kind of charity attached to them. They don't know the law. Now, mind you, they may be doing it for tax write-off, but I didn't read in the law that if you're doing it for tax write-off, you ain't going to get the promises. No, I didn't read that. And, and most of them, if not all, are ignorant to the rules that they're participating in. But you see, the law isn't interested in who you are. The law isn't interested in whether you're fat or skinny, whether your cousin is the prime minister cousin, or your second cousin to Donald Trump. The law is not interested in any of that. The law will respect those that respect the law. Lord, I love in this. Oh, I love in this. I just can't sit down straight in this place, man. I'm going to put some more air conditioning up in here because I just get, I run it hot right about here. See, if you dismiss the law, the law will dismiss you. I remember telling my, my son, uh, but I always just tell him this. I say, Kev, listen to me carefully. Listen to your old man. Kev, if you disrespect money, money will disrespect you. What do I mean by that? If you spend foolishly, if you have no perimeters in place, if you are not putting monies aside, if you are not helping other people, if you do not have a plan for the monies that you are coming into now, trust me, you're disrespecting it. That's what you're doing. And trust me further, it will disrespect you in the end. How is that going to happen? When the emergencies come up, when you want to go and travel like everybody else, when you want to do this and that, you got to go and ASU. You got to go borrow from here. You got to do every shortcut to get to your goal. That if you had done the rules, not only would you have gotten this successfully, but you would know nobody while you're doing it. Kevin Ewing left FedEx and don't owe squat. Don't owe no bank nothing. Don't owe no mortgage. Don't, I am debt free, owe no one, and was able to retire under 50 years old. That's nothing to brag about. It's I'm telling you this for this reason. When you follow the rules, when you follow the laws, when you follow the godly principles, that's the kind of results you're going to get. And things only can get better from here. Why? Because I follow the rules. Let's get back here now. I just read to you in Ephesians chapter uh, 1 verses 3. It says, blessed be the Lord our God, Jesus Christ, who has already, this already happened. He has already blessed us in heavenly places. This already happened. But if you look at the prefix before you get to the word blessings, it says spiritual. So he says he has already blessed us with all spiritual. So these, what that means is that they are not tangible. The, the, the spiritual blessing for me to have a, a car, a home, a family, and, and its origin, it's, it's not tangible. I can't feel it or touch it or see it. But he says, believe you me, I've already done it for you. It's already there. It's already there. So now let's go back to our original scripture, which is Joshua chapter 6 now. All right? I, I, I want to tie this in together now. Verse 2. Remember coming off the heels of verse 1. Verse 1 says that Jericho was straightly shut up. No going out. No, nobody could get in. No one. The way that the walls were designed, not, not even water could see through. Nobody could get in. They were, they were abnormally high. No one could get over it. None of that. But verse 2 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, Joshua, I have given this. You, you already have this. Let's go back to the scripture where we said earlier, Ephesians uh, uh, 1 and 3. You have already been blessed in this area. He says, I've given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Everyone in there of any uh, whatever, he says, I've already surrendered them to you. Now watch verse 3. Because in verse 3, even though he's told him in verse 2, you already have this. But what is he talking about? The same thing uh, Paul was talking about in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. In the realm of the spirit, in the spiritual world, you have your business already. You have the home you want already. You have all of these things you desire. But you need to go to the manufacturer and tell him, what are the rules I must follow to manifest those things that are spiritual into the physical realm? 
And don't come talk no mess to me, but I ain't sown enough. You are a liar, and you should have your tongue removed, because the scripture does not say that. But let's look at verse 3, though, of Joshua chapter 6. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go right, hold on, sound like you're getting some instructions to me. So why didn't God just kick down the wall? Why didn't he just take his foot from heaven and by I kick the wall down? Why didn't he do that? I'm listening. No. No. You know why he's not going to do it? Because the scriptures are clear. It says that we are co-laborers with God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We are a, we, 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 both of us have a role to play. So that's what I'm telling you. And, and someday you can get it, you know. Someday you're going to stop sowing money and start acting on the word of God. And you will now begin to see the things you was always looking for. Am I saying you shouldn't give the church and sow money? I am not saying that. What I'm saying to you is put emphasis on the word. What are the instructions that God is giving me? God showed you your husband, your wife in a dream. God showed you with a new promotion on the job in a dream or vision. God had someone prophesy something to you. Okay, you don't jump up, you don't somersault, you don't swing on the chandelier. The next thing you should ask God, God, what are the instructions to achieve this? What is it that I have to do? What in your rule book? What in the manual that I must follow to get this? Father, the, the, the doctors just told me you got stage 4 cancer. You got breast cancer. Pro okay, I, I am confused. I am angry. I don't know what to do. I'm depressed. The next thing you should just like how they tell you that, that, that the prophecy XYZ can happen and the doctor now give you some bad news. The next thing you should do, Father, what in your rule book do I need to comply with to eradicate this from my life? I will hear the rules. I don't want to hear nothing from no preacher. I don't want to hear nothing from no apostle. I don't want to hear squat from none of nobody unless it is accompanied with the instructions of God as it relates to his word. You could get mad. You could do whatever you want to say. Listen to me. For you to be upset with me when I say that, that means you think you're above God. You think it is your word that will make things come to pass. Uh-uh. The devil is a liar. And you are greatly confused. Radio land, social media, hear me and hear me well. If you want progress, if you want to fulfill what God has placed you here for, if you want to shine in life, if you want to go forward, I don't care who prophesy what over you. At the end of the day, in order to get or to achieve that prophecy, according to the scriptures, you got to follow the rules. Is God going to give it to me because I'm a Christian? No. Is God is going to give it to me because I'm the right honorable Dr. Kevin L.A. Ewing of the first Episcopal round, the big tree with the four grapes hanging from it? No. You know why? Who is going to give it to? He's going to give it to him who respect his rules. God said in his word, I will honor them that honor me. And those that despise me, I despise me, I will likely I will pay them no attention then. Why? Because you're not respecting the omnipresent God rules. So now in Joshua, they are given a whole heap of instructions on how to go about bringing down this wall. But it's gonna have nothing to do with their physical hands. It's gonna do everything with the living God. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is simply this. Yes, they are the children of God. Yes, they serve the Lord thy God. Yes, they participate in the Passovers and all of these other rituals that they had to do at that time to make atonement for their sins and so on and so forth. However, it did not guarantee them victory. What guaranteed them victory it was the rules in relationship to the victory that they're about to go and achieve. For example, in this case right here. Yeah, you did the Passover. Yeah, you gave the first food and all these other things. Okay, but that have nothing to do with these walls coming on. What is going to make these walls come down now is that after I told you I've already given them to you spiritually, in order for the victory to become physically, and this is a rule now called the rule of manifestation, you must not only agree with my rules, but you must do my rules. And as such, you will now see what my rules has promised. A lot of people today are still in the same position than they were seven years ago, ten years ago, but they still go to church. 
They are still uh, uh, whatever position they have there, but they will never in this life go no further unless they change the, unless they change their minds as it relates to the laws of God. They believe that the pastor could do this for them or the teacher or whoever. No, you are where you are in a uh, base position. And there are those who come to the church and, and accelerating over you. You know why? Because they're following the rules. They respect the laws of God. As simple as that. So here it is now. They were told to encompass the city. They were told to, to, to go around X amount of times and, and, and so on and so forth. Right? Now watch this now. The Bible says, let's look at verse 17 of Joshua 6. It says, and the city shall be a curse. And that word, I can't remember the actual Hebrew word, but here's what it means. It means that word accursed, which is also curse, it means something that is marked for destruction. All right? And the city shall be a curse, even it and all that are therein, meaning everything in there is curse. To the Lord, only Rahab and the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers uh, that were sent. Okay, so they're being told now that when these walls come down, now you see God speaking like this doesn't happen. These are the instructions uh, that you must follow. All right. So after all of this was said, I want us to go here now to where is it now? Where is it? I'm trying to find here. Anyway, in this particular story, they were also told again, I read it earlier, that they should not touch anything in there because the things that are cursed. So meaning that if anybody out of Israel even though they're following the rules, but they violate this one rule, it can cause the entire Israel to now not be able to be successful in future endeavors. And this is, again, why I'm saying to you, you have to respect the laws. You have to respect the rules, all right? So when we go over here now to chapter 7, chapter 7 starts off by saying, but the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. So you know what that means now? That means somebody violated the law. But the scripture here, this is key, and I want you to highlight this entire first scripture because it says the children of Israel, it didn't point at no singular person. The entire uh, nation of Israel is now being judged, not by God, but by the law. Remember what I told you in the beginning of these teachings. I said to you that one of the rules of the laws is that the laws are inherent, meaning that built in or incorporated into the law, there are blessings or rewards if you do the rules, and if you don't do them, then there are curses that comes along with it. In verse 1 here of Joshua chapter 7, it says, But the children of Israel excuse me, committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Camry, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed thing and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. You hear that? Now let me just put a little, 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 little promo in here, all right? Between today and tomorrow, I'll be doing a video at home. And that video is going to be dealing with basically what we're talking about right here, all right? I'm dealing specifically, I've been getting a lot of requests on this, Kevin. What does it mean when you find pennies by your front door? What does it mean when you find pennies on your doorstep? What does it mean when you find pennies on your workstation or in these strange places you're always finding these pennies? But this here is the, the root of what that means. And between today and tomorrow, I'll be doing a live video to, to explain that in detail and the significance and the spiritual implications that it, that it carries, especially if you pick it up and you touch it with your bare hands, okay? So that's just a little promo in there. You can look forward to that between today and tomorrow, this evening and tomorrow, okay? So the Bible is saying here that Achan had now singled out an individual unbeknowing to the rest of Israel that he now took things out of Jericho. Now we just read in chapter 7 where God says the whole of Jericho was a curse, don't take anything out of Jericho except for the things that he told them to take out. He says, don't take nothing else because everything else is cursed. Now, why is this? Because Jericho served other gods. They didn't serve the God of Elijah. They didn't serve the God of Abraham. As a result of that, 
everything that they owned, they were like communists, they dedicated it to their gods, their pots, their spoons, their clothes, their shoes, their children, everything was dedicated to their gods. So because it was dedicated to their gods, that means it was automatically cursed. So anyone who took of whatever they owned, they now begin to transfer that curse from, from where it was to wherever they take it. So if they bring it to their home, in their kitchen, and wherever in their home, so the enemy now have the right to afflict that poison because they have what they call a, 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 a curse item or a point of contact, meaning that this item now gives the enemy a legal right, which he didn't have before, because you have this on your property and this is this is Satan good, now he have the right to not torment the members of this house, cause strife, division, unemployment, all these other things. All right? So the scripture goes on and says, uh, the, the Lord anger was kindled. Verse 2, and Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai. Now at this point, they had already shut down. They had already circled around the place, the walls, and fall down, all these other things that happened, just like God said. Why? Because they followed the rules. When they followed the rules, supernaturally, the walls came down. Just like you right now, you, you want a home, you want a car, but you've been conditioned now that you have to go through a bank. You've been conditioned now that you have to go on an ASU. You have been conditioned that you have to borrow the money. That's a poverty mindset. God is saying, follow my rules. Continue living your life. When you get paid, you do what you're responsible for, pay your bills, and you invest in the life of somebody else. It may be $10, 5 whatever. Ask God, Lord, lead me to to place in somebody else's life. Why? Because the law says, he that give or scatter it shall increase. So if I want this money for this home, if I want this money for this car, whatever it is, then I cannot go by the world way because I can get the world result. And I mean, I can be in a mortgage for the next 20, 30 years. I can be paying for this car for the next 5, 10, 15 years. So if a deal come up between now and then, I lock in on this commitment and I am not flexible. But the scripture is telling you, do it my way. If you do my simple rules, then I can make the impossible happen. Let's go back to Jericho. There's no human way that human hands could have knocked down that wall. The way that God, it was, it, the way that it came down. So all God says, I can knock it down for you, but I need you to engage me. And how do you engage me? By following my rules. Follow my rules and I will make that which was impossibly natural, then I'm going to supernaturally knock it down for you. I'm going to supernaturally get that car for you. I'm going to supernaturally get your home where you're going to be debt free. I'm going to supernaturally do it. But the only way I can do that for you is you have to follow my rules. Follow my rules. That's it. Oh, no, child, I can't do a 30-year mortgage. The Lord done bless me. The bank approved me. And 30 years. Take that. Take that. <laughs> Take that. You in bondage for 30 years. You have to work now. You have to be there. You have to take nonsense from the boss in that company. You got to pray they don't close that now because of your commitment. But if you done it God's way, you'd have never found yourself in that position. And that's why I'm trying to put emphasis on you. What are the rules, preacher? What are the rules, apostle? Tell me the, you don't tell me your prophecy. You don't tell me all of this nice stuff. Now, what do I have to do as it relates to the rules to attain what the prophecy said was going to happen? That's what I'm reading. And Joshua sent men, verse 2 of, of Joshua 7. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai. Ai was a fraction of the size of Jericho. So they were confident, man. We could knock AI out with, 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 with no pressure, no bunch of people. It says, which is besides Bethaven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and view AI. So this is the intelligence branch of the army of Israel. And through the commandment of their leader, Joshua, he said, Now y'all go check out AI and see how we can deal with them. So verse 3 says, And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, let not all the people go up, meaning we need all the whole army to come, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor there, for they are but few, meaning that Ai. So we don't need the whole army to come. Verse 4 of Joshua 7 says, so there went up thither of the people about three thousand men. And they fled before the men of Ai, meaning that they were getting the 3,000 men that they sent to shut down Ai. These 3,000 men ended up running away from the men of Ai. 
Verse 5 says, And the men of Ai smote them, about 30 and 6 men, or 36 men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebrim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted, and because, and sorry, and became as water. So isn't that interesting now? Watch what's happening here. They just had a great victory knocking down, uh, that's like, uh, let's say the Bahamas, small Bahamas, under 400,000 people in total. Take down the whole of America, over 300 million people. We shut them down altogether. So now we got to go fight uh, Cuba, which is less than a fraction of the size of America. But when we go to fight Cuba, Cuba sent us backpacking and plus killed some of our men. How could this be possible? Well, it's possible when you disobey the law. Now, here's what I want you to see. See, you got to look at this with spiritual eyes. You see, the defeat at Ahai was in the apex of what happened here, you know. What is being revealed, and that's why I'm constantly saying to you that the Bible isn't a book of stories. The Bible is a book of stories, and embedded in those stories are the laws of God. And God is showing you what not to do and what to do, how to avoid or to prevent this through the rules in these individual lives that he has used here. So, it was the respect for the law that they were able to become victors with Jericho. It was the disrespect of the laws that caused them to be disrespected and defeated when they went to fight AI that was a fraction of the size of Jericho. Why? Because somebody decided to go and violate the law. But this is what I want you to see because it's greater than that. Because this person was a part of this organization, which was Israel, we didn't need the whole of Israel to violate the law, just one. And when Achan secretly took of what he should not have taken in Jericho, it now invoked or levied a curse over the entire nation of Israel. Why am I saying this? I am revealing to you, I am taking my time and delicately going through this to show you that when you defy the laws of God, you are not bringing only damnation, defeat, and non-success to yourself, but those who are connected to you will pay also. This is why I say to you all the time, I know you can get mad again. Be careful who you are. They're talking nonsense, but it's your covering. You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know what's going on in their personal life. You don't know if they're homosexuals. You don't know if they are thieves. You don't know if they are working which You don't know none of that. So when you talk in mess, but so-and-so is my covering. Oh, I covered under so covered. You better be covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. The only pure covering. No human being can cover you. That's why I get so upset about it. Because you are you are literally begging. This is my covering. You wake up here. Well, cover me, Mr. Obear man. Or this is my apostle. I know my heart. My apostle is a sweetheart keeper. But cover me, Mr. Apostle. No, it don't work like that. You just read it here. Aiken. Aiken, who was a part of the children of Israel. I read nowhere in there where it was him and a group of them that did this. Him won. And as a result of this man who was a part of this group who did this evil, it cost 36 men their lives. And the other set had to come back running in shame and defeat with their tail between their legs. Nobody covers Kevin except Jesus Christ. None. No human could cover me. And I will say this till I draw my last breath. Because I believe it with all my might. Covering is a doctrine of devils. It keeps you stagnated. It put the emphasis on a man that believes you must go through this man to get to Christ. And they try to cover it up by saying you must. We're talking about account. It got nothing to do with accountability. Because I read in the scriptures where it says that we are all accountable to God. Listen to me. You don't need to be accountable to no human. Because at the end of the day, that human cannot judge you. That human cannot put you in heaven or take you out of heaven. That human cannot put you in a hell or take you out of hell. At the end of the day, God is going to say, have you followed my rules? But God, I was covered under uh, Apostle Kevin Ewing. Apostle who? 
Did he do my roots? No, oh boy. No. No. Let's get to the word of God. This nonsense but covering, get from underneath this foolishness. You do not know what's going on under no in nobody's life. Only God knows that. Anyone who pray for me, right there in my heart, many people say, Kev, let me, let me pray for you. Some people I bless, they say, Kev, man, let me, I just got to pray for you. You bless me. They don't know I right there in my heart. Father, if this person is of you, then I come in agreement with what they say. But if this clown is not of you, God, I reject everything. They, I refuse to let them change the divine ordinance on my life. I refuse to accept something that is not of God. I refuse to let what is on them that is contrary to the will of God to come upon me. Uh-uh. I know too much to fall for that any longer. That's not going to happen. Pray for me all you want, but you can't cover me. Only Christ can do that because you are limited. You are limited and when it comes to me. I can leave from here right now. You don't know what's going to happen to you. So how you could cover me and you don't even know what's going to happen to you? No, 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 no. That ain't going to work here. That ain't going to work here. So here it is now. Achan has caused all of these ruckus. And the Bible says that God, I mean, Joshua went before God because he was confused. And that is what breaking the laws does. See, the idea of the law is to bring order to something. And wherever you see disorder, it simply means that there was an interruption that brought about confusion. Someone, there's a red flag that someone or something has violated the laws. And as a result of the laws, it's going to produce confusion, meaning that it cannot produce what it, what it was promised to produce. Someone did not carry it through. Someone did not fulfill their part of the law to bring about the results that God had promised. Uh-uh. No. Give me the rules. So the Bible says when God, when Joshua went before God and says, Lord, what happened here? You said, according to your word in Joshua chapter 1, that wherever the soles of our feet shall thread, uh, uh, that have you given to us, and no nation shall withstand us. Yeah, I did say that. But did you follow my rules? So what did God say? God ain't even entertained him. And I want you to read the whole of Joshua 7. The Bible says, God said, there is sin in the camp. Uh-oh. Sin in the camp simply means someone has violated the rules. Someone did not do what the rules have said. And what did I say to you earlier? A part of the law is that the law, once adhered to, has an obligation to protect the one that's adhering to the law. When you do not obey the law, the law cannot protect you. So now that Achan had violated the law, the law could not protect Israel anymore. So as a result of it, they had to succumb or be subdued by their enemies. God take his law so serious. Let me show you how, how serious God take his laws because it's gonna, it's, if you continue to read this chapter, it's going to show you what God tell them they had to do with the cancer that was in the camp that has caused all of this confusion. He said, get Achan. After he went back, Joshua says, listen, somebody in the camp doing fool. And Achan says, me. I, I did it. You know, the wife didn't know. The children didn't know. The, the puppy and rabbit, those, nobody knew. I, I saw some nice, you know, some nice uh, uh, slim fit shirt and some nice jeans pants with some nice shoes. So I figure, you know, nobody was looking at me. You know, what, what, what could this do if I take this? I mean, come on. God owned the cattle on the towels. And hell, how much more he want? <laughs> you know? And he, when he came and confessed, God told Joshua, he said, Joshua, have your men get Achan, get his wife, get his children, and everything, everything that he owns. Why is this? This seems so harsh. So you're missing the point. Achan activated a law that defiled his entire bloodline. So in order for God to stamp this out, all of them had to die. So he says, not only stone them, but burn them. When I first read it, I thought it was so, how could a loving God do something like that? Everybody said that. Oh, how could a loving God, look at the people in Africa, they have big bellies and hungry. Oh my God, all this is a drought. No, no, stop it, stop it, stop it. No. Who, what rules did they violate? Which other gods did they serve? He tell you, if you do this, you will get that. So don't go mess around, okay, 
And just like how the Bible prophesied that when you do it your way, it will fall in your face. Don't come now and rather than take him responsibility for your action, oh, what kind of God this is. He's the same God that tell you not to do it. So don't foolishly judge God. Don't say, oh, I should take my life right now because there's something, you know, everything happening for everybody else except me. No, 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 no. No, there are rules that are being violated. There are rules that are being dismissed. This, you are dishonoring the manual that has been designed to give you peak performance in this life. You are dis dismissing the manual that is supposed to slingshot you into your destiny. You are dismissing the manual that is supposed to give you a peace of mind. You are dismissing the manual that is supposed to eradicate that spirit of depression and fear and anxiety. The reason why you have that is because you find more confidence in Xanax, more confidence in all of those other pills as opposed to the rule book, which would have eliminated them or of course you not even to have those things. I'm telling you from experience, I used to have it. I used to have severe depression. I tried all the pills. The ones you had to, when you go to the drug, to the, to the, to the pharmacist, you got to sign off on them. I took all of them. Made my situation worse. But when I commit to the rule book, when I read the scripture in Psalms 119 verse 165, and it says, Great peace have they that love thy what? Law. And nothing shall offend them. Will I fall in love with the law? I fall in love with the scriptures. I read it. Anyone who knew me know I was day in and day out reading this. They thought I was a fanatic. Well, they depressed. I'm not. They going through. I'm not. Why? Great peace have they. What is one of the laws of not just peace, but great peace? Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Psalms 119 verse 165. Uh, Isaiah 26 and 3. Thou which is God will keep him in perfect peace. How is this going to happen? If his mind is stayed upon thee. If I constantly on but my mind on the word of god constantly reading the word of god reiterating the word of god meditating on the word of god it says god will keep me in peace what is the what am i trying to tell you peace anger just come oh hey i'm mr peace i'm looking for you kev kev mr depression go come here kev no no even though I'm a child of God. No, I must engage the law to get the results of the law. I must respect the law. So anybody who is telling you, you got to sow this. You got to take this miracle cloth. You got to put this oil here. You got to go bathe in sour line and go down to the beach and baptize you 66 times at 3 o'clock in the morning. That is not of Christ. The rules are simple. The rules are straightforward. You, if, if you're being tormented in your mind, I have read no scripture where you must do these rituals. That's voodoo. That is obey. You are making your situation worse than what it originally was. Go get the rule book. And say, Lord, show me where the rules are to get over this anxiety. Show me where the rules are to take this fear from me. The scripture says he did not, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, he, he, being God, did not give me a spirit of fear. So I get it from. First of all, he's identifying the fear as a spirit. It's not an emotion like the dictionary tell you. It's not a rush of anxiety like the dictionary tell you. No, 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 no. The scripture, which I believe over the, over the dictionary, the scripture has identified fear as an entity, as a spirit. And the scripture is also telling me, God did not give me that spirit. Instead, it says, he gave me love. He gave me uh, power and he gave me soundness of mind. So if my soundness of mind is being challenged, God didn't give me a soundness of mind to challenge it. No, the spirit of fear is now coming to challenge it. So what do I do now? I find the scriptures and I begin to speak. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. But even in that, even in repeating those things, I must look at all of what the rules say. The rule says, if I obey and observe to do all thy law, 
Then shall I be the head and not the tail. Then shall I be above. So don't come tell me when I say, hey, brother Tom, how you doing? Oh, I'm highly favored and I'm the head and not the tail. I hope you're doing all along. I hope so, because those scriptures specifically say that you become a qualifier as the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, when I observe to do all the law. Give me the law, preacher. Give me the rules, preacher. All right? Give me the rules. Okay? So at the end of the day, when people come back and say, well, well, I do so and so, but it ain't happened. What did you do? Did you do the rules? Did you read all the rules to see what is required to bring about the promises that God has said? Don't come around here because you went on fast for, for 30 seconds and then you expect all the hell was going through in your life to stop. Uh -uh. No. Don't try to circumvent the laws. Because the laws establishes order. Order simply means the right way things are supposed to be running. So in order to achieve God way, which is righteousness, the God approved way of doing things, then I need, I need to know what the rules say. I need to know what does the law says about this particular area of my life. So I want you to challenge those who are teaching you. Challenge those who are preaching to you. Rather than preaching to you every five minutes about tithe and offering, and you need to give four and five collections, and you need to give first and second fruit, and you need to, to, to all this mess. No, man. No, 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 no. Stop picking out sections of the law to benefit you, preacher. If you are a true man and wo a woman of God, you will tell them what the entire book say. Don't just harbor on Sabbath. Don't just harbor on tithe. Don't just harbor on sweetheart keeping. Let's do an, uh, an expose of the entire book. Let's see where we are falling short because it has to be wherever you are failing in life, it is a red flag that there is a rule being violated. It is as simple as that. It gets no complex. It gets no, you don't need no degree for this. There is a rule that is being challenged. So this is why now, this is why it is so important. Remember I said to you, I started off by saying to you that everything is governed by a law. Everything is governed by a rule. Nothing is happening haphazardly. Wherever you are in life, if you are experiencing unspeakable joy, you're doing something right according to the scriptures. Now, when I say joy, I'm not talking about you selling dope and you got a couple of money and while somebody else's life being ruined, you're living off of blood money. That, no, no, that's not real joy. I'm talking about the, 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 the Bible or the God prescribed joy. If you're experiencing that, then obviously there are rules that you have followed, whether you're aware of it or not, that's giving you that end result. So this is why now it's important. It's important now that you're learning these things, you are going to be extra careful who is speaking into your life. Who is speaking into your life? Some people anxious to become pastors, anxious to become apostles, anxious to take that bully role and, and speak damnation into people's life. No, 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 no. It's not a day I don't go pray better in the morning or the evening and say, Lord, excuse me, anyone that is speaking evil. See, here is why you got to do that. You see, your life, uh, the contents of whom you are right now is as a result of ordinances, whether it's the ordinance from the kingdom of darkness or the ordinance of the kingdom of light. Let me give an example of that. The young man or young lady you see walking up and down in the streets who have lost their mind who are doing things that they would have never done under normal circumstances, whether they're ripping off all of their clothes, whether they're talking out of their head, whether they're eating out of the trash or whatever. There's an ordinance over, or there's a law over them from the kingdom of darkness that has assigned evil powers to them to convince them to do those things that they don't want to do. So therefore, how did that happen? Well, it can happen several ways. One, they were either engaged in sorcery, and inviting spirits that actually turn on them, or it could have been a case where someone projected curses at them, or it could be uh, bloodline related generational curses falling on them, where most people in their family crazy, now it fell on them. With that said, once you, however it's coming, the, the idea of it, whomever it's affecting, the ordinance has been changed. But, and this is where the grace of God comes, and this is where accepting Jesus Christ give you the right. And I told you about it the last time we spoke in, I think, uh, second, not second, Colossians chapter, I think, 2 verse 13, somewhere around there, where it says that the handwriting that was blotted against us, 
has, Christ has expunged the ordinance that was written against us, meaning that the evil things that they have spoken against our destiny through the blood of Jesus, through his sacrifice, he's abolished all of that foolishness. So this is why when you go into these places and these people talk in mess, but there's prophet and prophetess and, and all they could prophesy is evil and wickedness and, and God can get your enemies. And, and all, every time you read a prophecy they write, it's always where somebody can get hurt or, or God can, but nowhere where you who being prophesied to is the God and preach the gospel, bring souls to the kingdom of God. It's always God disgracing. Now, whether or not that's true, here is what I'm trying to tell you. If Kevin Ewing prophesied to you, because I can tell you what Kevin is doing now. While Kevin looking at you, Kevin saying, Lord, again, I just told you. First of all, you cover yourself with the whole arm of God. God, if what this poison is saying, if this is truly you, God, then I receive this. I receive this prophecy. God, if this is not of you, then I reject it on every level. And whatever altar they are speaking from, and whatever spirit from that altar is speaking through them, for me to accept this condemnation or this mess, Father, I reject it even now in the name of Jesus. I command these words to fall to the ground and never take shape in my life. Let these words become foolishness. Let these words depart into a desert place and never ever take place in any human's life. No, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your title is. You are not above God. The final authority comes from Jesus Christ. So if you are a smart person listening to me right now, you would follow that same rule right there. You know how many lives and destinies has been misplaced and, and, and altered because someone believed more in this person who's speaking damnation over them, who is now diverting. I was one of them. That's why I can tell you that. I had a false, fake, phony prophet who I didn't know at the time. I didn't know what I know today who prophesied mess in my life and everything that man said to me to my demise came to pass in my life in a negative way, just like he said it. I received it, ignorant to the rules and ignorant to who he was. When God made it clear to me, this, this is where it all happened, son, right here. You was doing fine. You wasn't at your peak, but you were doing well until you encountered this false prophet right here. And when he spoke into your life, he... You, he what he spoke didn't change my destiny, you know, is what I received that changed my destiny. So that's why I say to you, you need to know the rules. You need to know what, what, what are the rules behind prophecy. Who You need to know because at the end of the day, that's your life. So by the time you catch your head, you're 60 years old. You can't do nothing for yourself. Nobody can help you. So it is mandatory, it is mandatory that you know the rules. It is mandatory that you understand what are the legal perimeters as it relates to the scriptures that I should be operating in. I'm not operating off no hype and no riddles and no rhymes. I'm not interested in that. I want to know. I hear you, preacher. Preacher, you're saying that God... It's going to turn it around and God is going to bless me. I believe that part because the scripture says so. The scripture says he has already blessed me. He has already blessed me with all spirit. I believe you, preacher. I got you. I got you. But I read here where God also told the same thing to the children of Israel. And he told them. He said, listen, yes, Jericho is shut up. Yeah. But guess what? He says, but I've already spiritually given the victory to you. But in verse 3 of Joshua 6, he says, he goes right into the rules. He goes right into the principles. You don't see them jumping around. Oh, God can break it for me. God, I see a breakthrough. You don't see no dancing and carrying on like they had no part to play in this. No, 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 no. There were rules that were given to attain the promises that God had made to them or to cause what was spiritual to manifest in the physical realm. So if you're failing right now, if you're failing on your job, if you're failing in your marriage, if you're failing in your body, if you're failing in your mind, wherever area you are failing in right now, take this moment. Father God, based on this teaching, clearly, I obviously I ain't doing something right because you can't follow the rules and get negative results. No. Point out to me, Lord, which area in my life, who or what have I connected with that has changed the glory of my life, that has changed the ordinance of my life, that has changed your original intent for my life? What is it that I participated in? What is it that I'm constantly speaking? Now begin to look at the people that you're surrounded with. 
Because that could be a part of it too. Who, the Bible says that he that keepeth company, this is a rule, this is the rule uh, or the law of association, he that keep company with wise men shall become wise. Proverbs 30 and 20. So what that mean? The opposite is also true. If I keep company with fools, I will become foolish. So you need to look at it. Lord, what is it? Is it, is it some books that I'm reading that's polluting me? Is it what I'm watching? Is it the company or the family that I'm with? Is it the job that I'm on? What is it, Lord, that I'm in violation with as it relates to your law that is consistently giving me defeat as an end result? Ask him. He can show you. God, what is it? Now I heard Kevin say something about the law of extension. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his lips. I'm guilty of that, Lord. Because yes, I agree with the pastor that there is a breakthrough. I believe the pastor when the pastor said that there are people in here that God is going to release into their destiny. But I don't think that's me because based on the law that Kevin just told me, I mean, if I want to be real with myself, I'm always speaking damnation. I'm always speaking negative. I'm always talking about what the boss this. I'm always saying how I can never get a promotion. I'm always saying that they never picked me for this. And not knowing that I was activating a law that was extending the period of when I should have been in that position. I didn't know that. But now that Kevin is revealing it to me. So now, based on what Kevin is saying, I should put more emphasis not on the preacher, but on the emphasis on what the rule book says. What does the, the manual for my life says? That's key. That is key. You need to know what does the manual say. If your car is a Toyota and if your car break down, you don't go stop somebody in the road and say, give me the manual for your Land Rover so I can fix my Toyota. No. You get the Toyota manual. And human beings are the only people that I am aware of who seek everything else for their solution except the word of the living God, which is the manual of life. I don't get it. I don't understand that at all. So I'm saying to you out there, those of you watching me on social media, those that are listening to me here in Grand Mama on Dove 103.7 FM, make the rules, the laws of God, which is the Holy Bible, your priority. Put a demand on your preacher. Put a demand on your apostle. Put a demand on, put a demand on me. Kevin, I don't want to hear nothing from you. Unless the word of the Lord is attached to it. Kevin, I hear all your little fancy talking, but where is the rules? What do I do according to the law to achieve the blessing around the corner? What do I do according to the law to participate the shift in the atmosphere? What do I do, Kevin, to bring healing in this body that you said God spoke to you and he is going to heal me? Okay, Kevin. So what do I have to do now? Because again, the law says that we are heirs with God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are a team. And in any team, all who are a part of that team have a part to play. So what is my part, preacher? Preacher, yeah, don't come to me preaching that I got to sow a seed because you're trying to circumvent the law. Don't tell me if I want that healing, I got to give you a couple dollars. Don't tell me if I want a wife or husband, I got to get an envelope and, and put a seed and, and put whatever garbage obey you try to get me to participate in. No. Tell me what the rule book say. The rule book say he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord, right? Okay, I got that. But what do I do to find a good wife, preacher man? What rules are supposed to lead me there? Well, one of the rules says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says now, in order to, to get the divine directions, it said, I must trust in the Lord thy God with all my heart. Lean not on my own understanding, meaning that, yes, she is pretty. Oh, she is curvy. Oh, she is highly educated. And if we get married, everybody can say, oh, my God, look at Kevin. He got a beautiful, educated wife. Oh, my God. But if they don't know the hell Kevin catching home, they know the sleepless night Kevin got, they know Kevin down by the beach trying to drink all the seawater to kill himself out there, they ain't know none of that. No. The scriptures say, though, there is a way that may seem right to you, but the end of destruction. 
So in order to get to that good thing, the Bible says in Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, and this is the law of divine direction. He says you must start out. This is the protocol. Don't trust in the pastor. Don't trust in Kevin. Don't trust in the bishop. No, they are mere mortals and men. They could fail just like you. He says, trust in the Lord thy God. Not with peace of your heart. He said, with your whole heart, with your entire being. Then he said, the next instruction, lean not on your own understanding. What you thought was the right way, he says, expunge that. You was looking at education. You was looking at status. You was looking at money. You was looking at security. He says, throw all of that in the garbage. He said, lean not on your own understanding. Instead, he says now, even though I'm looking for a wife or you're looking for a husband, he says now, even though you're only looking for a wife or husband, he says, the next protocol is, in all your ways now, acknowledge me. In all my ways, but Lord, I only want a wife or husband. I didn't ask you that. Every area of your life, look to me. And then what's the result? And he which is God shall direct your path. I'm going to end with this right here. I'm going to end with this right here, which was what I asked earlier, or what I said earlier. When was the last time you heard a person who said they're going to get married? You would hear, oh, we have to go find a counselor. We need somebody to counsel us. Or we need to go to a pastor. Or we need to go buy. How much people can be in the wedding? You know, we need to have 15 brides and all these other I mean, uh, bridesmaids and so on. You know, we need to have flowers and the centerpiece. All this they're talking about. Nowhere did you hear in there. Honey, let's go to the Bible and let's look at the rules as it relates to union. Let's look at the rules as it relates to holy matrimony. Let's focus on, honey, you see what this Bible is saying here? This rule book saying that a man must love his wife like Christ loved the church. Now, baby, I know if I'm capable of doing that. See, now you can see whether or not you should be with this person. Honey, another rule here says that I must submit to you, sir. And you know, I, as a woman, got a master's degree. I don't submit to no man. See, see, the rule book will de make you see for yourself. You need no uh, counselor to tell you this. The rule book will make you see that I can't do this. The rule book is going to save you years of turmoil, years of misery, years of crying, years of pining. All of that, the rule book trying to cause you to see now. But oh, no, no. What the, what the others want you to say, but you know, you know, he, he is, he's an accountant and, uh, you know, she's a lawyer, you know, they're both educated and they'll have a strong family. By, by which rule? Which rule says that? Let me look, look at this Bible again. Let me see which rule say where Jesus say that if you, have, one is a lawyer and one is a doctor, it can be peace and safety in this relationship. Uh-uh. My friend, listen to me. And I finish right here. Learn the rules to whatever you're getting involved with. Primarily, you want to know the rules that govern life, which is found in the Holy Scripture. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another teaching on today. I thank you for the ears that have heard, the eyes that have seen. Now I pray, Father God, that you give them understanding. I've given them the wisdom. Now give them the understanding to make applicable your word. Father, I break that curse that was originated by an evil covenant that has placed scales over their eyes and has stuffed stuff in their ears spiritually so that they would not hear you. Let those scales fall, fall. Let their ears become unclogged to receive of not Kevin's word, no, but your word. Let your word and its changing powers, once they would have made practical what you have said through me, let that become their portion. Let that become their delight in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those who are about to be married, those who are in marriages, those who are seeking promotion, those who feel that you have called them to leave their jobs, to go, whatever the case may be. Let them trust in the Lord with all their heart. Cause them not to lean on their own understanding. Cause them to acknowledge you in every way. And you promise that if they follow that protocol, then you will direct their path. So I pray for... Yes, I pray for divine direction, but it also requires those that are listening to me to participate in that law, to receive of the divine direction. I pray that whatever it is that they're going to do, 
cause them to first think in terms of what are the rules? What are the principles? What is it that I need to know as it relates to the manufacturer's uh, coordinates or requirements in order to be successful? Your word declares unto Joshua. In Joshua 1 and 18, you says, Let this word depart not from your eyes or your mouth, but meditate upon it day and night. Then shall you make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. Uh, Psalm chapter 1 says, uh, The man who delighted in the law of the Lord, and he's meditating upon it day and night, then he should become like a tree planted by the rivers of water that shall bring forth his fruit in his season. So, Lord, let your people advance. Let them go forward. I cover each and every one with the blood of Jesus Christ and prophesy according to the word of God that they will be catapulted in their destiny if they follow the rules of this book. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Thank you, all. I look forward to seeing you next week as we continue with part four with the rules that govern life.